One of the things that's also kind of important, okay, to think about in Linux is that it has a, a file system that's a little different. Let's take a look at that. I'm going to put up a diagram here of uh, of the uh, Linux file system. And for those people who uh, are coming from a Windows environment or others, this might be new information. So in a Windows environment, at the very top, you might have a C or a D or an E or an F. There might be, these are physical drives. Linux works on a logical file system. And at the very top, there's a slash. And that slash is often referred to as the root file system. That's the top of the file system. Underneath the root, you have a number of subdirectories. And probably the most important ones is there's one here called root, and that's the root users. Okay, root user is like the system admin in Linux. We have the boot, the Etsy. Etsy is generally where your configuration files are stored. Now, we say configuration files, those people are coming from a Windows environment. When you configure an application, you usually have to go through a series of clicks. And click, 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 click to, to configure it. In Linux, configuration is all done through text files. So there's a text file, you go in, you open up the text file, you make the changes, you save it, and then you restart the service, and then you've reconfigured it. Those files are generally in the Etsy directory, generally. There's a home, and that's where you, as a user, are at, right? So for instance, I go back here. To go back a level in Linux, I go cd dot dot. That takes me back one level. I can go pwd, present working directory. This tells me where I am in the file system. This is a really useful command. So if you're not used to using the file system, the, the command line in the Linux file system, you can always just enter PWD, and it'll tell you where you are. And so you can see where I am. I'm under home and then my username. And my username here happens to be Kali. It could be other things, but that's where all of my stuff is stored, <laughs> is in my home directory. Let's go back to our, our diagram again. Then you see there's the mount directory. Okay, this is where you're outside. So for instance, if you're putting a physical drive on your system, so a new hard drive, new SSD, it's going to be mounted at this directory. That's where it's going to be attached to the file system. And this actually is kind of a, a term that has a, it's a throwback to like the 70s and 80s when people used to physically mount. They would take a tape. You know, back then, data was stored on tape, and they would physically take a tape, and they would mount it onto a, a computer, big, a big tape. And so that's where this term comes from, because remember that Linux is basically a clone of Unix. Okay, Unix dates back to the 70s, and so some of the terminology comes back from comes through that era. Process is proc is where we have a lot of uh, our processes. We have files there that manage those. I'm going to skip this one. We'll talk about dev. This is devices. This means like things like keyboards and mice and all of the devices on your system are maintained in a file here. And then we have bin and sbin. These are binaries. That's what the term I was just talking about is binaries. This is where you'll see stored the files that are executable. And sbin is system file, system binaries. And then you'll see here lib, which is libraries. These are the what in the Windows world is often referred to as a, a DLL, a dynamic link library. This is just basically code that can be reused. So if I'm writing a tool, writing an application, I can go in there and pull and use call a piece of code from the libraries that I need to make my application work. So it's rather than everybody rewriting the same code over and over again, like how do I how do I make a window, right? You know, in my application, I can just call the code. And this plays a big role in hacking because you oftentimes need to have the proper 
libraries to actually use the tool. And so one of the things that you'll see as you develop as a hacker is that certain tools you need to download specific library files that the application is dependent on. And then finally, we have user. And this is where we're going to see other users on the system are going to be underneath this directory here. We can see these directories if we go back to go cd and then go right to the very top of the file system right cd slash that takes us you can see here it shows me a slash that means that i'm at the very top of the file system now i can view what's in there by simply using the ls which is short for list all right list and i can just go list and it'll show me those are all of those directories and a few others that we didn't have on our diagram. And one of them that's important here is media. So in that diagram, I talked about mounting a hard drive to the system. But in modern Linux systems, we now have what's called media where your flash drive and other devices will attach or amount to the file system. And we'll talk more about that in future videos, but they now get mounted at media and not at mount. And you see a few other things that are there as well. So this is one of the key commands is ls. I like to use ls-l. Let's go and do ls-l, and it gives me a little different view of the same information. So what it does now is it gives me some information on the permissions. All right? These are the permissions. We'll talk more about permissions in a future video. And then it tells me how many links it has. That's what this is, is links. And we'll talk more about links in the future. One of the things that I didn't put in the uh, my Linux Basics for Hackers is much of a discussion of links. And so that's probably something we'll, we'll talk about in a later class. This is the owner of the file or directory. Notice here this. Let's, uh, let's talk about this very first letter here. That tells us it's a link. So this means that it's a file that's linked to another file. It's connected so that when I use, when I click on or use that particular command, it takes me to another command. That's what a link is. It shows me right here that the binary is also linked to user binary. So when I use the binary file or directory, it's going to take me to the user binary. Binaries, as I said, are simply executable files. This first letter here, the D, says that this is a directory. When it starts with a dash like this one here, that means it's simply a file. All right, so you see, oh, most of these here are are all directories. We might we we'll probably see some, yeah, right here. We've got a file, a swap file, right there. If it starts with a D, it's a directory. If it starts with a dash, it's a file. If it starts with an L, it's a link. And I'm going to leave this right here, which looks like <laughs> gobbledygook, looks like gobbledygook to most people who are new to Linux. But basically, what this is is it defines who has permission to read write and execute the directory or the file right and this is important in linux security so this is what our top of our file system looks like right we've introduced a few commands there 